So let's let's move a little bit and let's talk about reading other people in the game of life, being able to read other people. I mean, how does that how do you see that outside of poker as like leading to success or leading to failure? And what are some of we're going to get into tactics. I want to start with like kind of the theory and then I want to hear like some of the most reliable ways to read people and like what how that plays out in like a world sense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, people ask me that a lot about real world stuff. I'm actually pretty like I'm pretty skeptical. And it's funny you ask because I'm this podcast I'm just working on right now is about is an interview with Tim Levine, who wrote a book about deception in you know, his theories. He's a psychology researcher and he has uh, theories about deception, detection and how about a lot of the behavior information we tend to think of about that's accurate for detecting deception is just straight up bullshit. You know, like a lot of the research shows that it's really hard to detect deception and these kinds of things. Uh, so with that in mind, like I tend to like, it's not very often that I feel like I'm getting much more information than other people in real world situations. Like, uh, you know, I, I do think the thing I will say is like, I think verbal stuff, statement analysis is so much more uh, meaningful and reliable than is nonverbal stuff. So I, always, I tend to tell people for if you're interested in reading people in the real world for like interviews or whatever speeches or interpersonal stuff, you should read books like Mark McClish's I Know You Are Lying. And he it's about analyzing what people are saying, like the actual content and like because there's definitely like things you can learn there that apply to real life. Uh, you know, things like why you know, and, and, and they're based on pretty simple and easy to understand logical ideas and uh, psychological ideas, you know, for example, like the fact that people don't like to directly lie. So when people do try to deceive you, they'll speak in more indirect and ambiguous ways. And that, that applies to poker too, but it's just a general principle because we don't like to lie. We, it actually, for some reason, you know, it's like when you watch interrogation videos and, and such, it's like, for some reason, even people that are, that have murdered people, find it they don't like to just directly say like hey i i didn't kill that person you know it's like you would think that right. would be the easiest thing in the world but like people like have all these indirect ways they'll try to say that and the same in poker people don't like to say uh you know hey i'm bluffing or or you know they'll they'll or hey i have this this specific strong hand they'll find indirect ways to you know so it, it, it plays out in a lot of areas and that that i'd say is one of the key things that comes up in in real life is like well why is that person um speaking in an indirect manner and not just saying like a like an innocent person would they just come out and say like hey i didn't do it like and be defensive about it and, and like people that are guilty or or have something to hide speak in these more indirect ways and they they'll tend to be the other big pattern is they'll tend to be more conciliatory like they'll they'll be they'll be more if they have something to hide or, or are guilty in some way including bluffing and poker they'll be more conciliatory in the sense that they don't want to trigger the other person's, uh, you know, anger or irritation. So they'll act in, in ways that are more like obliging. And so this way this plays out in like interrogation scenarios, for example, is, you know, somebody who's guilty, if the, if the interrogator basically accuses them indirectly or directly, they'll be like, you know, an innocent person would be like, Hey, I didn't do that. Why, why are you doing this to me? But a, a guilty person's you know more likely to be like, uh, just really calm and be like, well, I can see why you think that, but let me walk you through why, you know, it's like they're just more obliging and more nice and not as defensive. And that plays out in poker too, where like bluffers are unlikely to like even just get small uh, facial expressions of irritation, like a brief irritation, you know, or uh, uh, like for a brow in, in spots where they're bluffing because they don't want to trigger like examination from their opponent, you know. So it plays, those, those kinds of patterns play out um, a lot in, in real world scenarios. And I'd say the, the most, the thing I'm probably, uh, the thing that comes up a lot, I'd say in real world scenarios is just realizing like, why did they say something indirectly when they could have just told me something directly? You know, why, why did they do that? And digging into that and, and asking and being more skeptical, it just raises more, it doesn't mean that there's no, they're necessarily hiding something. It just means like, Hey, maybe I should ask some more questions here. Uh, that comes up a lot. And I would say for people interested in that stuff, read Mark McClish's book, I Know You Are Lying. And actually that was the that was the foundation, the inspiration for me writing my verbal poker tells book because I was like, oh, there's some of this stuff in poker. Like the the things people say have a lot of meaning because and much more meaning than nonverbal stuff because when we try to communicate, 
poker is such a competitive and, and deceptive atmosphere that a lot of times when people try to deceive, not even trying that hard to deceive, but it just, there's these little things where their attempts at deception can leak information, you know, like if they're trying to think you get you to think about something else, uh, you know, the way they phrase the words can be very meaningful in, in the same way in like interviews and interrogations. Now, it doesn't mean that that's necessarily obviously always the case, but it's more like, especially if you're in like a borderline spot in poker, which comes up a lot, you might go one way or the other. Um, but yeah, I think there is, there's a lot to, lot to learn. I, I think people, the main mistake people make who are interested in, in reading people better is focusing on the nonverbal physical stuff and not focusing as much on the actual content of what people say. 